This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and here's something that I picked up a couple of weeks ago that I never dreamed would show up. It seems that vintage television sets are, are getting to be very hard to find. In fact, when I go in the thrift stores now, about all I see is overpriced 90s and 2000s black and silver plastic crap. Occasionally there will be something there from the late 80s, but like I said, they're usually way overpriced on their TVs. But, but anyway, one of the ladies that runs a flea market, or actually she's a vendor at one of the flea markets, sent me a message and said that some people had this TV that you see here, and she gave me their phone number, and I called them up, and the lady wanted to know what I'd give her for it, and I said 10 bucks, figuring that she would scream to high heaven, like so many people do now when they have something old. They think it's worth a fortune, but she said, come get it. So I went and got it out of her storage building. What we have here is a Quasar 2 works in a drawer, 23-inch color TV. And you can see it says a product of Motorola Incorporated. This set is very filthy and nasty, but if we can get it going, I'll clean it up. There's our control door. There's our preset UHF tuning buttons and our other controls. Now this particular TV uses a hybrid chassis, meaning that it contains a mix of tubes and solid state devices. The only tubes in this set are the horizontal oscillator tube, horizontal output tube, damper tube, and, and vertical output tube. Everything else is solid state and on plug-in modules. In fact, this whole thing slides out on a drawer, hence the name works in a drawer. Here's the back of the set. Now what makes this TV really special is this is one of the very last Motorola TVs before uh, Motorola sold their consumer electronics division to Matt Schuster. This TV, according to the serial number, was made April the 26th of 1974. And the Matt Schuster buyout was completed, I believe, on May the 28th, 1974. So this was basically made about a month before the, the Matt Schuster buyout. All right, let's get the back off and have a look inside and test the CRT. Here's our chassis slid out the front. And here's our power supply and horizontal sweep chassis that contains the flyback, horizontal output tube, damper tube, power transformer, etc. All right, now let's get our CRT tester on this and test the picture tube. I'm a little bit dreading this because this is an instant on set, which means the CRT filament stays on at reduced voltage no matter whether the set is turned on or off. That way you can get an instant picture as soon as you flip the power switch, but the disadvantage of that is it, it kills the CRT a lot quicker than it normally would so if the tube's bad it won't be the end of the world but it will it will put a delay on the operation of this set. Alright we're now checking the red gun heater to cathode short good G1 short good cut off And that's not so good. We have it turned wide open and it should be up here in this little black mark, but the good news is it's climbing. Alright, let's check emission. That's not good at all. But let's not fear just yet. We'll let it sit for a while and cook, and hopefully it'll come up on its own. That's the green gun. As you can see, not too good either. And there's the blue gun. So let's let this sit a while and see what happens. Okay, we've been cooking for about 15 minutes. There's our blue gun and the good. Here's our green gun. It's moved up into the good, but it's, it's there on the borderline pretty close. And there's our red gun, barely in the good. Obviously, this is not the greatest tube in the world. It is a little bit on the tired side, but it's better than what it could have been. In fact, it's really better than what I anticipated, to be honest. I'll just say a word about vintage TVs and picture tubes. 
picture tubes, to my knowledge, are no longer being made anywhere in the United States, and they're not being rebuilt anywhere in the United States, which means when you obtain a vintage television set, uh, the first thing you should probably do is test the condition of the, of the CRT, and if it's bad, then you might not want to go any further until you can find a tube. And like I said, tubes are no longer being rebuilt or made, so finding a tube might be difficult. Usually your only options are, either, are to either find a new old stock one from a parts house or a closed down TV shop or possibly eBay, or getting a tube out of a junker TV, which might be hard to find. And a lot of these picture tubes are expensive when you do find them, so you want to keep that in mind. In fact, when I'm buying vintage TVs, if they want more than, say, 10 or $15 for the set, I insist on checking the tube before I hand over any cash. And if they won't let me do that, then they can keep their television. I know twice in the past I got stung pretty bad on paying too much for an old couple of old black and white TVs, and the tubes were dead as a doornail in them. So that, that taught me a lesson there. Okay, I let it cool down, and now it's back down into the red again. I think I'm going to try it on Auto Restore, the, the most gentle form of rejuvenation, and see if that will bring it up. So we move this switch to Auto Restore, and then press the Rejuvenate button until the meter does three cycles. Alright, that's good. Now back to cut off. Whoa, that came up really well. Oh yes, that's good emission. That's the red gun. Now let's let's do the same thing to the green and blue. Okay, we might have to not do the green and blue. There's the blue and it's reading good as is. Now let's do a life test. And as you can see, the, the meter needle is staying up. It's not plummeting down into the red like it would do if it was an extremely tired tube. Here's the green life test. You see, that's not quite as good as the blue, but it's not horrible either. Here's our red that we rejuvenated. Life test. That's not too bad at all. Staying up in the green. So this tube might actually hold up a little while. Okay, well that takes care of the picture tube. I think it'll last us a little while now. Okay, that concludes part one, testing the CRT. Next, we'll evaluate the chassis, but one thing I see that we need to fix is I noticed on the horizontal output tube plate cap, we had this little coil that has come apart. I think that was some type of interference suppression little choke coil on here, and you can kind of see where it's all rusty and corroded looking, so we'll have to address that before we... Uh, power the setup. Who knows, that might have been what put the whole TV out of commission. Now one thing I've learned about these sets from me working on one about 20 years ago, which was the last one of these that I've seen, and watching Doug Harlan's videos and his commentary on the various vintage TV groups is that these sets use a lot of film capacitors that are ERO branded capacitors that I believe are made in West Germany. Well anyway, those are garbage. They cause all kinds of problems. 
and by now you really have to replace all of them to, to get the set working right. That's really not a huge deal in one of these. You just unplug the modules and and, and replace the capacitors and, and then do whatever other troubleshooting needs to be done. Okay, that's about it for now. There will be a part two or three or four or five or six or however many parts that we need, but I don't know when that will take place because I have some other obligations that I have to attend to, but it will happen one of these years. I powered it up and I believe it popped the circuit breaker. Yep. Turn it on again. Yep. So we have a short somewhere in the system.